I'm a big fan of the B52. Hey guys, how you going? Welcome back model makers and hobby enthusiasts. This is Hearns TV and it's me again, Dan, and I'm going to take you through the unboxing of a kit that I think is really super cool and I want you guys to know all about. Now, this is an icon of military aircraft that I have here today. And it is, of course, the B-52 Strato Fortress. Hang on, let me back up. This box, this box is pretty big. This model is pretty massive. B-52 Strato Fortress. Absolutely awesome aircraft, this one. The B-52 first flew um, in April of 19. 52. So it is 70 years old this year and um, the uh, United States Air Force is expecting to use it well into the 2050s. So this may very well see just over 100 years of active service uh, with an Air Force, which is an unbelievable milestone for any aircraft to be in, uh, to be in uh, combat roles for that long. Now, the B-52G that um, I've got here, this is an early, an early model of the uh, B-52G. The uh, G model came about uh, to extend the life and the capability of the B-52 uh, because of the problems that the B-58 Hustler was having. Very cool playing the B-52 Hustler, but it was very problematic and did not see uh, very long service with the United States Air Force. Uh, and the uh, B-52G remained in service until it was um, due to the uh, arms reduction treaty with the uh, USSR. Uh, they started uh, taking them out of service, I think it was in 1994 or thereabouts, and the last one was actually uh, dismantled in 2013. A total of 193 B-52Gs were made, which makes it the most produced out of all of the variants. Um, very big, noticeable plane. So uh, let's take a look at the inside of this box, shall we? All right. Open up. I'll move this off to the side. And um, first thing I want to do is we're going to take a look take a look at the instructions Italeri made this kit this is a 72 scale and uh, despite the fact it's 72 scale remember this plane is enormous so it's going to be a pretty big kit ah perfect you see it as soon as we open up now this is the camouflage scheme uh, for the the uh, Southeast Asia. The B-52G was used in Vietnam in small numbers. It, used, it was used during the Linebacker 2 raids, uh, although most of the uh, bombing work was done by the B-52D, but because of the G had more advanced uh, electronic warfare capability, they were usually the first ones in. Beautiful camouflage scheme, actually. Strategic Air Command, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, badge right there, now disbanded uh, Strategic Air Command. And here we have the couple of other color schemes for, um, for the bombing units, the United States Air Force. Strategic Air Command was the uh, US Air Force's uh, tip of the spear when it came to nuclear deterrence against the Soviet Union and also their um, missile silos as well. The instructions, I like the way it folds out actually, um, you can have it in front of you, you can look at multiple things all at the one time. Page by page is good, but ha having it out like this with such a large kit would probably be a better idea. And let's have a look at, ah, the, the Hound Dog missile. Uh, this one, the early one, carrying two Hound Dog missiles. Here we have just the plane uh, scheme, and then you've got the uh, camouflage on it as well. The Hound Dog missile was used to, intended to hit uh, Soviet uh, anti-air and radar installations from a distance and create blind spots in uh, their air defense. So that way the other bombers could just 
fly into those gaps and drop uh, their nuclear payload on said opposition. Now let's take a look at the kit itself, shall we? Okay, so we'll have a look at, here we have the front, the very front, the fuselage. And the nose and see where the, the wing roots are. Now you can already see that this kit is impressive very big and um, also here with the moldings you're going to need some fairly decent uh, snips when you're cutting this off uh, of the molding and you're probably going to need a fair bit of sandpaper as well to uh, sand it back but yeah there's the nose so th and then look at this well here we have the <laughs> the upper parts of the wing. This is impressive, isn't it? Once again, you've got uh, thick parts of the molding, so you're going to have to snip that out. And uh, once you're going to have to do a little bit of a little bit of sanding. I like the raised panels here, and all of the uh, panels along here are all indented. So when you use uh, panel wash and panel lining to give it some uh, uh, bold details, that it'll really sink in. Um, I think you should really go for the camouflage scheme, uh, the sorry, the Southeast Asian camouflage scheme on that one, because uh, camouflage on big angry planes is, is just too cool, way too cool. And here we have the underside of the wings. As you can see, the still very thick molding there. So once again, heavy duty snips, and you're gonna have to do a fair bit of sanding as well. And here we have the indentations for the the engine pods where they had two and two so four under each wing for eight in total and the b52g also introduced external pylons for additional fuel tanks to extend its range uh, originally they were going to do a fairly significant redesign of the wing and even new engines on the b52 but decided against it because it was going to take too long uh, and to get it into service I will move that off to the side. And now we have the rear of the fuselage and the tail where we've got the moldings and then the rear, this is where the tail barbette had um, rear facing guns. Uh, two B-52s were credited with shooting down North Vietnamese MiG-21s during the Vietnam conflict actually, although I think that might have been the B-52D and not the B-52G model. Uh, the B-52G was the last one to have uh, tail guns. They were removed for the, the next model, the B-52H, which is the current one in service. So what I want to show you quickly here is what we've got the tail and then add the front there. Look at that. Now, you're going to need a pretty big shelf to put this thing on. And um, this is definitely going to be a, like a, a centerpiece kit uh, in the, the ones that you have on display. Very cool. Very impressive. I like that a lot. You're going to need a lot of paint too, I'm guessing. And now, more of, more of the tail. Here we go. And then raised surfaces and indentations or indented panels for the details. Uh, you can imagine this thing um, once it's all finished, actually, uh, how cool that's gonna look. I really like this kit and I hope you, I'm sure you guys are liking it as well. Right, let's move those over to there. And engine mounts and we'll even Chuck in, and here we have the engine pods as well, and some of the hound dog missiles, or the half of the hound dog missile, and then we have the fuel tanks here and the landing gear. Um, quite a lot of wheels on the on a B-52, all centerline landing gear, and there were actually outrigger wheels right on the extreme ends of the wing that were actually quite flexible as well, like uh, like on the B-47. Yes. I like the details on this model quite a lot, actually. Itilary make quite good kits, actually. I have a Henschel 123 kit 
by Italeri at home, which a uh, beautiful model, came out really well actually. And oh, some more details on the engine just here. I'll move that one off to the side here. The turbine blades just on the inside where the uh, drawing in the air and uh, thr thrust that goes out the back. And now let's have a look at some of the some of the interior, shall we? Of the crew compartments. Yes. Five crew members on the B-52, the pilot, co-pilot, navigator, weapon systems offer, operator, and the electronic warfare officer, who I think also used to operate the tail guns as well. Here, these are the sensory pods that go at the very front of the B-52, um, just under the front of the nose. And here is the tail right there, the tail barbet where the, the heavy machine guns were. And then we've got the some of the interior where the crew would sit and here as well. And these are the covers of the landing gear as well. Big doors too, very big doors. And now let's have, oh, before, just before I show you the decal. And obviously <laughs> the canopy where the uh, pilots would uh, be looking out the front of the plane. Cool model, I really like this one. I think I might get this for myself. We have a couple of them in stock actually. And now let's have a look at the decal. US Air Force, here we have the badge for Strategic Air Command, the now disbanded uh, Strategic Air Command that uh, was uh, responsible for some of the delivery of nuclear weapons for the United States Air Force here. These ones are more, the, the black stripes here, these ones are more for the uh, simple paint job, which is more the, the gray, uh, dull, the dull gray and the white underside of the, uh, that you would have seen in the instructions earlier. I like this too. I like the big, big insignias, add a little bit of color to it. And all of the obvious, you know, US Air Force markings that would be, uh, would be required on, to, on, the, on the aircraft here. And here we have the markings for the Hound Dog missile itself. But yeah, cool, very cool model. I'm a big fan of the B-52. But yeah, very cool, the B-52. So I would love to see it get that title of one of, uh, over 100 years of active service. There's almost nothing sees 100 years of ser active service in the military, especially not aircraft. But yeah, it would definitely be a title that um, history and Boeing would uh, definitely be proud of. But uh, yeah, thanks once again for tuning in, guys. I love making these videos and I hope you enjoy listening to me ramble on about this stuff. And uh, yeah, hope to see you in the store sometime soon. And as always, rock and roll, baby.